So for a while here on Tech yes City, I've been touting this cooler right here, the VTG5, which is an AliExpress special. You can get it for, well, at least you could get it for $25. Now the price has gone up to around about $34 does come with two fans and it is a beast at least when i tested it on a 3770k in the past i could get that 3770k up to 4.8 gigahertz and it was in less than ideal temperatures in terms of ambience now we've got two other choices here of course the cooler master 212 hyper 212x 30 dollars shipped to your door from amazon so it does come in a little bit cheaper now than the vtg5 and it's been a staple cooler for years this thing is pretty much the go-to recommendation when you're looking for really good value for money for an air cooler. And of course, last of all, we've got here the Arctic Esports Freezer 33. Now you can get this in different color schemes. It's black and you can get the white cooler that they sent out here. You can get it in a green. Also, I believe there's a blue and some other colors available. Now this comes in also at $30. Now the good thing about this cooler is it will support AM4 out of the box. So you can install this, have no problems with a Ryzen 5 1600 six core, for example, and get some pretty good overclocks. Of course though, people are wondering which one is the best in terms of performance? How well does it cool? Well today, I'm gonna to be throwing all three of these coolers on a 7900X at four gigahertz. Because at 4.5 gigahertz, I pretty much know that all three of these coolers will get overloaded with that amount of heat and pressure. However, at four gigahertz, it juices around about 160 to 170 watts. So it is a pretty intense benchmark still for these three coolers. And of course, we'll see how they hold up. Now, another one you guys have requested is the VTG 240 mil water cooler. This thing's about $58 shipped to your door, comes with two fans included. Though of course, people hearing about how good the VTG5 air cooler is, they wanted to know if the VTG uh, water cooler will do just as well or even better. Of course, since it's a water cooler, it costs more. Is it gonna perform better? Now also, I've thrown in the H110i GT from Corsair. Of course, it's a lot more expensive than all the coolers I'm featuring here today, but it is a benchmark. And at least in the past when I've tested this, it's been pretty much the best all-in-one cooler you can get. So how does it all fare? Let's get on with those results. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. This is your Yes Man, Brian, coming to you guys with a cooler comparison. One might say it is a cool comparison, but anyway, let's run these benchmarks. What we got here, 40 minutes after testing an Ida 64. Now, one thing I will point out, these are Delta adjusted results. Because I got no air con in the studio at the moment, I did have to uh, adjust the temperatures with the ambient temperatures throughout the day. So what you're seeing here is sort of like as close as it gets to apples to apples comparison when it comes to uh, changing temperatures throughout the day with ambience. But also we tested with Ida 64, and the reason we test with Ida64, at least around my channel, is because I believe it's really a good uh, real-world benchmark to use when you want to get the maximum temperatures for things like people editing videos in Adobe Premiere Pro or people just gaming on a CPU intense benchmark that utilizes all those cores and threads. Of course, people will be like, well, why don't you test with Prime95? I found Prime95 just to be an absolute monster in terms of how much power it can draw out of a CPU, especially if that CPU has SMT or hyper-threading. So kind of not really that real world, if you ask me, when it comes to Prime 95. But with that aside, what we saw here was the VTG5 air cooler. It did indeed win on those benchmarks. It came in with a max temperature of 77 degrees. Of course, with one fan off, it came in at 83 degrees. So it did lose a bit of its edge when we took off one of those fans. Uh, what you could see also with the noise, it was a little bit noisier than these other two coolers here on the bench. I'll let you guys take a listen. And next up here on the test bench, we had the eSports Freezer 33 from Arctic. So with Arctic, they do make really good GPU coolers in the past. I've used them on my uh, graphics cards, for example, that have had reference coolers, and the results have been phenomenal. I was really surprised to see this coming in at 78 degrees, so it was only one degree delta adjusted, hotter than the VTG5, but it made a lot less noise. I'll let you guys take a listen. So with the Freezer 33, you get the aesthetics, you also get the performance. And now it's funny because when I first tested this cooler, I thought it was gonna come in last because it was the smallest cooler. But when I started weighing up all three of these coolers, this one weighed in about 700 grams with the fan attached. The VTG5 with one fan attached weighed in around 720 grams. And then the Cooler Master 212 
X came in about 580 grams. Though the uh, weight wasn't too much of a problem with the 212X, you might think as it weighs a little bit less, it will perform less as well, but that came in at 79 degrees delta adjusted. So the performance was really good on the Cooler Master 212X as well. I'll let you guys take a listen to the noise as I believe it was the quietest out of all three of these. So when it comes down to it, between all these three air coolers, they all did exceptionally well. I can recommend all three of them. I would like to see the VTG5 come down a little bit in price. I loved it at $25, especially internationally shipped. At $34 shipped around the world. It's still a really good deal for people in remote areas that can't get access to these other two coolers. So it still gets a recommendation. I'd just like to see it dropped a little bit in price. The eSports uh, Freezer 33, $30 exceptional value for money except for one thing i didn't like the mounting system with the fan i thought it was uh, real tedious if you couldn't get your head underneath and uh, install the actual fan clips it just kept coming off it was very hard to work with when the test bed was already set up and i was trying to put the cooler in so if you are installing this on a new build get your cpu in there get this cooler on first thing before you insert your memory or you do anything like that. As for memory clearance, I believe it, uh, all three coolers kind of did have a little bit of a problem here fitting on that uh, raised Vengeance LED memory. Also, that aside, we got the VTG water cooler, 240 millimeters. This thing really didn't impress me at all. I was surprised because the VTG5 air cooler did really well, but this thing didn't do that well at all. I was kind of shocked. It did... Um, it came in very quiet. I'll let you guys take a quick listen to the noise. But for a water cooler, it was really lackluster and also I didn't really like the build quality. I thought the pipes uh, attaching the actual CPU block to the radiator were very flimsy. So I would kind of recommend avoiding this one if possible. Uh, also, the LED fans, however, did look exceptionally good. Those ring glow fans did look as good as they look on camera. They just look beautiful, uh, but they only come in blue, I believe. So $57, at least that's what you can get it for. If you're game enough, you can try one out. I'd recommend maybe upping the fan speeds because all these four coolers out of the box, even the H110 as well, and we'll get onto that in a second, they're all tested with out of the box settings. Now with the H110i, of course, that's what you can expect when you pay threefold these air coolers. Of course, it gives you better performance. It does have that extra headroom, but of course it does cost more. And that's about it for today's video. I did buy both the VTG coolers off AliExpress. I will put the links in the description below. Arctic sent out their Freezer 33 for me to take a look at. So thank you for Arctic. And if you enjoyed this video, then be sure to hit that like button and let me know in the comments section below which of these coolers you like the best out of the bunch. Oh, and also I did have to buy the Hyper 212X, which I'll be putting in a client's build in the near future. Anyway guys, that's about it for me today, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.